Hey everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today we're talking banana worms and microworms, how to set up the culture, what they're good for, things like that. Stay tuned, we're going to show you some gross worms. Alright, so here's the worm cultures I got in the mail. We've got microworms here, we've got banana worms here. What's the difference, you might ask? In theory, banana worms are about half the size of microworms. That being said, they're both really small. And unless you're working with very small fry like rams and bettas and stuff like that, you might not even need banana worms. But a lot of times, the shipping, uh, you're already paying that, you may as well add a different culture on there. I just want to see if there's any culturing differences for me. And so you can kind of see, you know, you don't see reference size to the worm on that, but you can see all those squiggly things on the package are the worms. And the brown mush is the medium. And then up here, we have the microworms. You can see they're a little bit thicker. I don't know necessarily if they're that much bigger, but uh, you can see those as well. And then this cellar also included some flake food, I think a little bit of yeast, and some pipettes. And uh, oh yeah, it does see yeast right there. So I'm gonna show you how I make my cultures. I don't use uh, oatmeal like most people do. I use actually mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes smell a lot less and I've done it both ways in the past with using yeast and not using yeast. I actually never saw a difference with using yeast. So uh, yeast is very high in protein and stuff and that works out pretty well, but I'm not convinced that it's a necessary thing. And you know, here they're just, uh, you know, uh, oh, this is Breeder's Best Small Flake apparently. So anyway, uh, let's get the camera set up. We're gonna show you how I make these and some things to look out for. So the first thing you're going to want is some containers. Uh, it doesn't really matter what type of container you use. These are kind of like the flimsier, uh, like Rubbermaid, almost semi-disposable containers. And I like something with a little bit bigger side to it. Because what's going to happen is you're going to put your medium in here, which is our mashed potatoes, and the worms crawl up the side. And then you want to run your finger along the edge and collect the worms and put them into a tank. You can also use a paintbrush or Q-tip, that type of thing. But so I like something a little taller. You can do it in shallower things. It's just not as much separation for you. Um, but what you need to do is get some mashed potatoes. Just open this up here. And it doesn't really matter. You just want like just mashed potatoes. You don't want it with salts and all that kind of stuff. And uh, you know, like this one is just straight up ingredients. Idaho potatoes with emulsifer. And it's got some sodium and crap like that in it. But, you know, you want to get just a little bit in there. And so there's no magical amount, right? Like I've seen people do this in five gallon buckets, which I have no idea why they need that many microworms or banana worms. But, uh, you know, I, do, I put some in there and basically you put some water in there as well. I just happen to have a bottle of water, so we're gonna make it easy for this demonstration. And you don't want it to be too, too wet. That's, you know, you don't want it to be too dry or too wet, but you kind of put a little bit of water in there and mix it up a little bit. Clearly, we are too dry at this point. It's still all flaky. Some more water in there. And I find if you, you know, it's best just to keep doing it until it kind of turns into mashed potato consistency, you know, which we're not there yet. You can also use baby cereal. You can use oatmeal, which is traditional, but the oatmeal smells a lot. We're almost there. You can see here we're starting to like get it clumping up. It's almost like mashed potatoes at this point. And you just wanna, you know, you wanna stay wet. You don't want it to dry out, so. But you don't want it soupy either. You don't want it so if you were to like pour it like this, it would just pour out. So you want, you know, some firmness to it, but still wet. Let's mix it up really well. I would say this is about right. It looks light and fluffy like mashed potatoes. It's not runny. And now you can kind of, you know, if you want to, you can get down there and make a layer of it. You just want something for these microworms and banana worms to feed on, and then something that's not bad for your aquarium either. Like if a little bit of potato gets in your aquarium, it's, it's fine. There's actually some fish foods that are made with some potato. And so don't worry about it if you're feeding baby guppies and especially anything that's an omnivore. Um, catfish will eat it. But yeah, in general, there we go. So then I've got this bed of 
mashed potatoes. You know, I was gonna say it doesn't fall out, but that part wasn't pushed down. It doesn't fall out, that's good, you don't want it too runny. Whereas like these ones here, they're very runny. And what's gonna happen over time is they get more runny as they kind of go to the bathroom and it's gonna stink more, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I'm gonna start my microworm culture first. Because it came with some yeast, I'm gonna put a little bit in because I've, I've got two options. Use the yeast or throw it away. And I figure, why not use it instead of throwing it away? It's not gonna hurt me. And fish can also eat yeast, by the way, if you guys don't know that. So that's, you just put a little bit of sprinkle in there and the goal is that it activates uh, the bacteria and everything that these worms wanna eat faster. So it's just sprinkled on, just a little bit in there, really. And then, so I, you know, these kit, well not kits, but these starter things can be anywhere from like free from a local hobbyist all the way to 10, 12, 15 bucks, depends on where you're ordering them and where in the world you are, that type of thing. Uh, this is my least favorite way to get it when it's in a bag because it's pretty much just a giant mess. It's double bagged at least, which is nice, but hopefully I can just take that one out. Okay. So you can see here we've got this just like crazy stinky oatmeal. And most people do it in oatmeal because oatmeal is really cheap. Oh, it looks like we're triple bagged here. So there we are. Now we've got a good mess. I'm just going to open it up. Ooh, stinky. And then all you really need to do is get like a scoop of the medium. Like even this is more than I need, but that right there has like a billion worms. And it stinks like, like almost like vinegar and stuff. And you kinda just wanna move it around the top. And depending on how fast you wanna get the culture, like, you know, it's always a good idea to spread the culture out. So if I made like three of these, that way if I crash one, uh, I would still have more to go. But, you know, it's, that's all it takes. You could this this culture I bought could make really a thousand cultures, ten thousand cultures, and so the price you pay at the beginning is almost irrelevant because you should keep it going forever. So now I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna harvest some worms. I'm gonna show you what that looks like, and then I'm gonna make my other cultures, and we'll do a little bit of talking. So what I'm gonna do is basically just stick my finger in here and get worms, and this is not the best way to collect them. It's much better if you have like a, a thing like we just prepared. But if you look here, you can kind of, it's not going to focus that well, but you can see that those are all worms. I'm going to put them in the water and we're going to watch these guppies eat them. And this is all you got to do. So you see that little cloud? That's a bunch of worms we just released. And you can see the feeding frenzy going on for them. But it's a very small food, great for a lot of different types of fry. Luckily, like adult guppies and stuff will eat it and shrimp will eat it and you know Corydoras and everything and so don't be worried I find a lot of people are so worried they're gonna get some oatmeal or uh, mashed potato or something like that in their water they'll just eat it anyway so like here's this is mostly oatmeal you can just put it in it doesn't matter like shrimp and snails and guppies and stuff like that are just gonna eat it anyway so you can see here that you know even the you know the panda guppies they'll eat it and it's not harmful it's just oats or mashed potatoes or something like that and so I wouldn't worry about it like I wouldn't go in there and try and put insane amounts in but don't be deathly afraid of it it's not harmful so the next thing you want to do is you want to get a lid on here now if we just put this lid on and close it down uh, it's going to suffocate long term, so we don't want that. We got to put a hole in it, but we want to keep pests out. It's 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 inviting for flies and stuff like that with all the smell. So you want to get you know something to make a cut in the lid, and you can just cut out a little square or something like that. It doesn't really matter. If I had a hole punch, I like that quite a bit actually. Got a piece of tape stuck to me, but all you got to do is kind of make a cut. You know, and like you know, like a one inch square or something. It's there's no you know, it needs this much surface area or anything crazy like that. It's mostly just needs to be able to breathe a little bit. And when you run really big cultures and lots of trays, sometimes what people do is they'll keep them in pillowcases. And that's another way you could do it. But I only run small cultures because I don't, you know, this will make all I ever need pretty much. So let me just pull this little square out. So there, I've made a square in mine. 
And then what you need is like either a piece of cloth, a piece of towel. I'm just gonna use a little bit of filter floss. And all I've gotta do is kinda jam it into this thing. And all this is gonna do is it's gotta keep, it's right there, I can remove the rest of this actually. Oh, I removed too much, I think. All it's gotta got do is keep bugs out of it. And that's all we're trying to do. So something like that will work just fine if I can get it to go in just a little bit more. There you go. You got something like that. That's keeping bugs out. You put the lid on. Now we've got a culture. So let's talk about this culture. So you've got yourself a microworm culture. If you've got multiple cultures, label it. That's the first thing. Label it MW, microworm, whatever it is. Put a date on it too. That's important as well. And I'll tell you why. Uh, you want to remake these cultures every three or four weeks. They'll last about six, eight weeks, depending on how warm it is in your room or wherever you're going to store them. Uh, I find I am lazy, which you guys already know, and so I'm much more likely to set it on top of an aquarium or just set it right next to an aquarium and let it sit there, right? And then I just go, oh great, I'm going to feed it. And uh, so room temperature does really well for me. And what that means is during the summer, they make more worms. During the winter, it might make a little less, uh, especially if you have it just one aquarium inside your house and uh, you know, you're letting the temperature fluctuate a lot. You might get different production rates. That being said, one culture like this makes a lot, a lot of worms. And you could upsize as big as you wanted. So if you needed you know, a 55 gallon aquarium filled with this, uh, that'd be amazing, but do know that you want something kind of serviceable because eventually that medium is going to get filled with kind of worm poop and you're going to want to swap it out and you do exactly what we just did. You're going to take like a, a dollop from this culture and put it in the new culture after you make the mashed potatoes and you're done. As long as you can do that once every three to six weeks, you will never need to buy that again and you'll have it forever and you'll have a live food for baby fish, adult guppies, all that kind of stuff forever. That's the great thing about them. Now, the reality is, you'll probably forget it's Christmas time, blah, I ran out of time, I went on vacation, blah, blah, and you'll buy it once every couple of years, or, you know, so what you can do, this is my recommendation, give it to your friends, especially if you have anyone local, your local club, so that way when you do kill it, you go, oh, can I get a start of that, you know, and all I gotta do is put it in a little container. Um, I'm thinking long term, we'll probably sell it on our website, and we'll have links to that down below in the comments, and maybe at the end of the video. Uh, where we have cultures. I haven't decided if we're going to ship them yet or not, so don't quite know, but uh, once you have them, you got it. And they all pretty much operate the same way. You can keep them climate controlled if you want by like a wine cooler. I've done that before, but that slows down the, the production. And so like in the store, I had it slowed down, but in my house, I want it to be ramped up, so I don't need one. But yeah, keep the bugs out, replace it every three, four, five weeks and uh, collect infinite worms. Get yourself either a finger, which you got one of those, but if it creeps you out to scrape the side, you can use a Q-tip, or you can use a little child's paintbrush, you know, like a watercolor brush. You just kind of go in there and you dab it in the tank, and there you go. Um, the worms themselves live up to eight-ish hours in fresh water. Uh, I wouldn't say don't ridiculously overfeed, just like we don't recommend that with any type of food, but um, definitely you can feed pretty heavy because fish are attracted to live food much more so than dry food. And uh, some things about worms like this, it's been shown in certain fish like uh, bettas and stuff like that. If you only ever feed them this, they'll get deformities. They'll actually get some fin deformities or burns going on and stuff like that. So it's all part of a healthy diet. You might put in, like in that tank I showed you, I might put in microworms every day, but then I'm also feeding, let's say, flake food or micro pellet or fry food or something or frozen food in addition to it. So not only that. And I think what it links to when the deformities come from, it's bare bottom tanks feeding a lot of microworms. The microworms die off, start to decay on the bottom, and then baby fish typically lay at the bottom when they're resting at night. So that kind of gets them that bacterial infection. That's the hypothesis anyway. We don't officially know why it's happening. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and make up my banana worm cultures and maybe a couple more of these and that's it, you know, and I can put them away and I'm done for a month. Do it once a month, put it on the calendar, you'll never run out again. So, so it's been about six days later and I've been feeding this worm culture, this is the micro worm culture, and I just want to show you what it looks like on the sides before I harvest and uh, like a, a thriving colony, if you will, or whatever. So right here on the sides, 
you can see these are all worms and there's just lots and lots and lots of them and uh, as I kind of turn it around here there's not so much on that side right there but you can see there's lots of dense worms pretty much all the way around so if we open the top here if you can get it in the right light you can actually see that the entire top is moving See, you see how the top, that's, that's millions, billions, trillions of worms, like an insane amount. And uh, so all I have to do is you kind of just grab some with your finger, like just like that. So that much right there. And when I put it into the water, now there is a lot of worms. So you can see that the guppies, you know, and even the fry there are going to go nuts for them. And they just kind of waft around and wiggle around and get eaten. And so I can go do that to a bunch of different tanks. And it's a great fry source. You can see that guppy just picking out on them right now. And that guppy is very small. You know, it's, it's basically, it's born in here. It's a newborn. And uh, so yeah, that's kind of the benefit is that you have a live food source. And you can harvest as much as you want. Like I could harvest all this. And in fact, if I do harvest all of this, it's just going to be back tomorrow because there's just there's infinite more, you know. And like even this is a little bit of potato in there probably, it's not going to matter. Like that little bit of potato doesn't matter, but I just put in like a billion worms. So these guys are just going to chow down. You can see the adults going nuts for them, even though they're so small. Now you just don't want to you don't want to only ever feed this, but you could definitely feed it like every day in addition to something else. So, uh, yeah. So there you go guys, hope you like it. That's how I make my micro worm and my banana worm cultures. And uh, I love it. Now I just gotta not get lazy and forget to make more of it every uh, three to five weeks. So thanks for hanging out, we'll see you in the next one. And let me know what you guys wanna see me do next down in the comments. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't like it, thumbs down. That's a voting system, helps me craft where we should go. Do you like these types of videos? Do you want more unboxing, that type of stuff. So anyway, thanks and we'll see you tomorrow.